Mizpah Hotel of Tonopah, Nevada, a big hotel with a bigger reputation. The story goes that Wyatt Earp kept the saloon, heavyweight boxer Jack Dempsey was the bouncer, and Howard Hughes married Jean Peters in the lobby. While this is an exaggeration, the true story of this glamorous Wild West hotel is just as intriguing. The history of this hotel goes back almost as far as the history of the town itself, Tonopah, Nevada. Tonopah got its start around 1900, when this spry lad named Jim Butler was out looking for silver in the area. Story goes that his mule wandered off and was lost for a night. When Jim finally found the animal, he picked up a rock to throw it in frustration, and looked at the rock and discovered it was silver ore. He brought his wife back to help him with the claim, and it was her that found one of the best strikes in the area, which she named the Mizpah, after her favorite Bible passage. In 1905, the majority of settlements in Nevada were small, transient towns, or even smaller mining camps. Even the so-called big cities were often short-lived boom towns, such as Rhyolite or Delamar, which jumped in populations of thousands and quickly became totally deserted. Buildings were rugged, and luxuries were expensive and few and far between. Yes, there were some exceptions which I'd love to talk about in other videos, but not here. At the time, the town of Tonopah, today a three-hour drive north of Las Vegas, was only five years old. A man named George Wingfield moved into the town and made a fortune winning poker games and dealing faro at a bar called the Tonopah Club, which he became a partner in. He invested his winnings into mining and amassed a wealth of $2 million in 1905 money. That's nearly $64 million in 2022. Now one of the richest men in Tonopah, he was joined by an old friend of his, George Nixon who moved into town and shortly thereafter was elected to the U.S. Senate as a Republican. The two of them, along with business colleagues Cal Brower and Bill Govan, who owned the Tonopah Banking Corporation, pretty much ran the town of Tonopah and met frequently to discuss business. At the time, the collected worth of these four men in today's dollars was well over a billion. And here they were, in this transient mining town, meeting in saloons and clubs. They wanted to meet in a beautiful five-star hotel like you would find in the big cities. And they wanted a place where they could host business guests and impress them with lavish accommodations to prove how successful their enterprises were. Brower and Govin's bank, the Tonopah Banking Corporation, was on Main Street, and the lot next door was a small restaurant property known as the Mizpah Grill. Cal either acquired it or owned it already, but the building was leveled to make way for his hotel. They liked the name, however, and kept it. In addition to being named for the Mizpah Mine, now owned by Wingfield's company, Mizpah actually means watchtower in Hebrew, a fitting name for what they planned to be the town's first high-rise. Now there's a historical dispute over who the architect was, either George Holsworth of Reno or Morrill J. Curtis, who built several iconic Nevada buildings at the time. Interestingly though, the two of them did work together to build a hotel in Goldfield around this time, so more than likely, since there are records of both having designed this building, they probably worked together on the Mizpah as well. The building cost $200,000 then, or over $6 million today. Construction was delayed by the 1906 San Francisco earthquake as many of the builders left to give aid to the recovering city, returning in 1907. The five-story building was the tallest in Nevada when it opened in 1908 and towered high over the adjacent Tonopah Banking Building, which actually now had offices on the first floor of the hotel, including a bank vault which still stands today. That bank vault in the lobby is now a mini-museum full of all sorts of artifacts from the history of the hotel and the town of Tonopah. When they started to do the construction of the hotel, they actually brought this vault in. It came in on a railroad car at some point, put it in place, concreted around it, and just basically built around this safe. Well, I don't know if you've actually taken a really good look at the safe, but Tonopah's actually misspelled on the top of the vault. 
The first story sported a grand bar and restaurant, and that restaurant today is known as the Pittman Cafe, and it's in the same location that it was since the start of the hotel. And above that were four stories of hotel rooms. We're in the oldest part of the hotel. This was the second and third floor above the old bank. So we're actually going through the old bank building right now. Because the bank building was older than the expanded hotel on the Mispa, these are the oldest accommodations in the whole hotel. And we're staying in this section by ourselves. There's no other guests in this whole half of the hotel. One thing that I like is that at every landing in the morning, they have coffee for you to be able to prepare for yourself, just on every floor. Patrons could get to their rooms by climbing the main staircase or ascending in the elevator. So this is Walter, and we were just told by the manager that this is his original operator's license. And he was the first operator of this elevator. Now they changed the cabin of the elevator and updated it a little bit over the years, but this elevator here inside the MISPA was the first electric elevator west of the Mississippi River. That's the whole western half of the United States. Sure, there are older elevators out west, but none of them were originally electric. Very few hotels have had this sort of an impression on me. I would say the Queen Mary in Long Beach, the um, Titanic Hotel in Belfast, the Grand on Mackinac Island, and this. I would rank this up there with uh, those fine, lavish hotels. This place is actually in the top 100 or so historic hotels in the United States, and it's the only one on that list in Nevada. I know that they advertised a barber shop within this building, and I'm trying to figure out where that was. Could be completely gone, but I think it might be this conference room here on the right, on the second floor of the bank building. On the top floors of both sections of the hotel are beautiful stained glass skylights. The rooms are comfortable, luxurious, and all have a vintage feel to them. And by the way, throwing in for Emma's sake, I hear they also have the best lip balm in the country. When you check in, they give you a uh, neat faux old newspaper that you can read through. and It has all sorts of information on the hotel, the history of Tonopah, some of the interesting characters involved in the Mitzvah Hotel story, and uh, random hotel guest services here. So this is a neat little keepsake. The staff is warm and welcoming, the history is rich, and this is well worth the few hour excursion to drive up to this hotel and stay for a few nights if you're in Vegas or Reno or even Los Angeles. The building also has a basement with a few quirks and stories to tell. So, as I kind of mentioned earlier, the basement's kind of like a maze, you know? Okay. Um, of course, a lot of it's used for storage nowadays. There's so much that, like, I have questions about, you know what I mean? For one, oddly, it has a front door and window that look out towards the street. The problem is, they're one floor below the street. So, I don't know if this was the original entrance to the bank or if this was the entrance to something else before the bank and before the Miss Pub Grill and before the annex. How far above us is the road? Probably about right where this brick is. Okay. So we're standing outside in front of the hotel right now on our sidewalk, so. Above one can see the vault lights of glass that once let in sunlight before having been paved over. Oh, what is uh, what is this? <laughs> it's part of the old uh, mining home. Oh. So this is something hey. you know, like to show everybody this small dumb waiter. Doesn't work, huh? No, no. <laughs> yeah, that would make sense. They'd cook down here and they'd send the meals up on that. Get that old door too. Any idea where that goes? I have no idea. Honestly, I've never even been in there. Oh. <laughs> on the far side of the basement is another bank vault a vault which usually contained the entire payroll of Tonopah's miners just before payday. Being in the basement, so well made and so sturdy, this vault was practically impenetrable, unless someone were to tunnel up through the dirt floor. 
I don't know why anyone would worry about it having a plain dirt floor in a town full of miners. Within a few months of opening, that opportunity was seized. Three miners tunneled underneath the building and right up into the floor, making off with the entire payroll and a large stash of gold. Well, sort of. So this is part of the old mining tunnel. It was connected to the tunnel that ran actually just right on the other side as well. They used it to transport the money. They used the ore bucket, to my understanding, um, to transport the money underground instead of risking the possibilities of getting robbed and things like that. Um, unfortunately, that was not the case. Two of these miners were found dead in the tunnel, double-crossed by the third, who completely got away with it and has never been identified. Neither has the stash been recovered. For all the glitz and glamour of the Mizpah Hotel, Tonopah was still the Wild West. And this was the first of several odd deaths to have occurred at the Mizpah Hotel. The next one took place on the top floor. The hotel had been run partially as a brothel, perhaps officially or unofficially. In the early 1920s, one of the madams was murdered by a jealous lover in front of room 502, either strangled, stabbed, or both. This has led to the tales of a haunting by a mysterious lady in red. While one of the founders of the hotel may have been a Republican senator, one of the hotel's prominent guests was in fact a Democrat senator, a man named Key Pittman, who had been coming to the Mizpah since its early one-story saloon days. Legend has it that two days before his re-election, he died sitting in the bathtub of his hotel room, and his fellow party members kept the tub filled with ice and hid his death from the public to prevent disrupting the election and quietly found a replacement after having secured his victory. The true story is slightly different. He suffered a heart attack in the hotel the day before the election and was rushed to the hospital dying. His party members told the press that he was actually recovering and he won the election the following day, perhaps scoring a few sympathy votes along the way. He died in his hospital bed within a week. Now what about Wyatt Earp, Jack Dempsey, and Howard Hughes though? Did they all spend significant time working or living at the Mizpah? Wyatt Earp was a lawman and famous gunfighter, known best for the gunfight at the OK Corral, part of his showdown with the Cochise Cowboys in Tombstone, Arizona, about 20 years prior. Wyatt Earp and his wife came to Tonopah in 1902 to prospect and run saloons. The story goes that Wyatt ran the Mizpah Saloon, but Wyatt's actual saloon was called the Northern. Wyatt only stayed in Tonopah for roughly two years, leaving four years before the Mizpah Hotel opened, and there's no record of him having returned. It's possible that Wyatt, who was quite the entrepreneur, did actually have a stake in the original Mizpah Grill, but these records have not been found. It's claimed that Jack Dempsey was a bouncer here. Jack Dempsey was a heavyweight fighter in the early 1900s and one of the most famous in history. Though he did fight in Tonopah, both he and his friend later wrote in life that he never worked at the Mizpah and was never once a bouncer. Howard Hughes, the brilliant psychopath of Culver City, California, and one of the richest men in history, is claimed to have had his secret wedding to actress Jean Peters at the Mizpah in 1957. However, official documents say that the wedding took place in under five minutes in a room at Tonopah's now long gone L&L &L Motel, which makes sense as Howard Hughes owned that motel. There are, however, verified stories of Hughes spending quite a bit of time at the Mizpah. Sure, the historic slogan of the hotel isn't accurate, but it captures the spirit of this 115-year-old hotel and the town that built it. This hotel has seen generations of mining prospectors, frontiersmen, social elites, and travelers. And when you stay here, you feel that history. The current owners have done a wonderful job refurbishing it after a long period of having been shuttered. It's the history, you know what I mean? I really enjoy working here. I get to do all the tours. Everybody's reactions when they come through the door, you know, they, yeah, you can see the outside of the building, but then when you come in, you're just completely, you know, taken away by all the decor and, you know, how well the building's been maintained by the clients. And you can tell that they really took their time to appreciate this place and they're going to continue to do so. Tonopah is three hours north of Las Vegas, three and a half hours south of Reno, and home to one of the clearest night skies in the country. When coming to Tonopah, the Mizpah is the place to stay. Though if they're booked, right across the street is the Belveda Hotel, a former bank 
and recently renovated by the Mizpah's owners. If you're interested in ghost towns, I've explored several across the country, including a good handful in the vicinity of Tonopah. There's a link to my ghost town playlist below.